go far uh, we've understood what the lord jesus has done for us and how uh, he himself has sealed you know this covenant for us as uh, the testator the testament and you know the testator and how this blood of jesus has done a great work for us not only the blood but the very person of the lord jesus uh, we have understood that all right uh, now let's move forward from verse 22 we saw how with the shedding of blood okay again if you go back to the old testament you will see that god asked for this without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sins where did this understanding come from even the cultures which don't take from the jewish traditions and rituals you would find that there is some innate sense of paying for the sins of the people in the conscience of human beings itself and you wonder where did people get this understanding and to pay with blood sacrifice you know animals uh, uh you know it, it's it's very uh, interesting and intriguing uh, even those who have never heard of uh, blood sacrifices from the old testament still practice blood sacrifices because you know, something in the in the uh, just the the framework of mankind and the heart of man tells us it tells us that sins need to be paid for and paid for through blood and very early on in the book of leviticus also god god instituted this practice the shedding of blood if there is sin there must be the shedding of blood now we know that the fulfillment of this was through the sacrifice of the lord jesus christ okay so uh, it was definitely uh, something that uh, was showing or pointing indicating towards what jesus is going to do for us now let's move forward from verse 23 okay, there are lots of these small bits and pieces of truth here that's why i'm looking at the text um, uh, intently while talking to us so mm, yeah so also another thing that we notice here th- is that uh, the things in the tabernacle they were purified similarly we are told in verse 23 that the copies of the things okay, in the heavens should be purified with these but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these so earthly uh, substances were purified but in the heavens you know how will you purify heavenly things obviously you need uh, a better way of cleansing and purification but we know that the blood of jesus right and the sacrifice of jesus was perfect enough to purify uh, the heavenly things okay and the lord jesus has not entered the natural tabernacle uh, which were just copies of the true tabernacle but where has he entered remember we discussed this when we studied hebrews 8 also and we said that he has entered heaven itself and where is he now in the presence of god not that he should offer himself often you okay, remember we said once and for all the lord jesus has paid the uh, price for us and so it also the other way of interpreting this when you say once and for all it means repetition is not required and therefore again it says here not that he should offer himself often once and for all it was already done for us okay um then as a high priest enters the most holy place every year with blood of another so in the earthly practice each year this needed to be done but obviously we don't require for jesus to repeat this 
if at all there was such a requirement uh, you would see that jesus also would need to suffer often since the world was created or the foundation of the world but now uh, it is very clear for us once at the end of ages okay, he has appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself so it's already done so what does this show for us now another thing you can interpret this as it is a perfect sacrifice so you know how people say that uh, uh, once jesus has died for us and uh, he has uh, done this spiritual work now we have to make up for any imperfection in his sacrifice through our good works or through um uh, our paying the price by by doing different rituals you know there are traditions where uh, people continue the sacrifice they live sacrificing through their own life and their resources uh, maybe even inflicting pain on themselves so that they are able to pay for the sins their own sins and sins of others but from what we read here we are told that it was already done so for me to become born again i have to put my faith in the once for all perfect sacrifice of the lord jesus christ i don't really have to you know uh do something to earn my salvation now yes once we are saved we know scriptures tell us that we must work out our salvation with fear and trembling and we must continue to pursue a sanctified life so we go through the uh, challenges and the struggle uh, to live an obedient life now, that's a different thing okay, that's not we are not talking about earning salvation through works now, that's living a life of obedience so in that we do have to uh, strive to live a righteous life to start off you no know, the earning of our salvation is already complete so i don't need to do anything now sometimes you know people have this idea that somebody else has to do if not me then maybe another saint has to do it or maybe another um, a good human being has to do it or uh, you know maybe some other person maybe another reincarnation of christ has to come from what we are learning here jesus has done it he has done it once and it is perfect so a repetition of this sacrifice for the remission of our sins is not required any more and this is what people from the old covenant were actually waiting for because before this what was the practice every day priest has to make atonement for the sins of the people every year high priest has to go into the holy of holies right to uh, also compensate for the sins of ignorance but after this these practices are redundant or you don't have to do this anymore because the fulfillment of that has been done through the life of jesus christ so you know we have a very very clear understanding of that and uh, he has appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself and it says and as it is appointed for men to die once but after this is judgment so christ was offered once to bear the sins of many again just doubly clarifying for us that you know one is is sufficient and also it points out that here another uh, part of the statement is that it is appointed for men to die once uh, in general yeah we recognize that you know this journey of passing through death it comes for every one of us at least once now there are a few exceptions in scripture you have people like enoch the ninja who never even passed through death once so far 
Uh, but you have some others who you could say have passed through death twice. You can consider Lazarus. Lazarus died, but Jesus raised him from the dead and obviously he died again uh, because that is the natural progression here on the earth that things tend to decay and death. But we know that the Lord Jesus has also overcome death for us because we can now put our hope in a resurrection that can only be offered you know, by the one who himself overcame death. Uh, and so, you know, we also have that kind of a hope. And we are told to those who eagerly wait for him, he will appear a second time. That's what is it talking about? It's talking about the return of the Lord Jesus. We we know we've, uh, and, and our, the class that I see here, of course, the online class, maybe some are taking the subject separately, but we have studied eschatology and we understand about the end times. Uh, we know how the Lord Jesus will appear uh, in the clouds and then the dead in Christ will rise first. And those who are alive, they will be caught up uh, in, in the rapture. So we are supposed to eagerly wait for the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, And uh, this eager Eagerness, again, it's so beautiful because imagine if we were burdened with the weight of sin, we would never be excited about the return of Jesus because, uh, or rather let's say not so excited, maybe we would be excited uh, because we are still paying for our sins, you know, day in and day out. But now when we talk about the return of the Lord Jesus. You know, we have that assurance, assurance of salvation. And also, not just that, but our worship for our Savior. He has become our high priest. He has become the perfect sacrifice. He has entered the true hev uh, heavenly tabernacle. Uh, he has given his own blood. You know, so many wonderful things that we are just ready to see. Wow, I want to see my Savior. I want to go with my Savior. Okay, so... These are all some insights that we have received from this chapter. Now, I also want to just share um, one more quick thing here, which will help us also. So I'm just backing up a little bit. And uh, where's that verse? Uh, yeah. So uh, I think it's verse 13, is it? 13 or 14, uh, where it says... Um, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God. Okay, so that one uh, uh, scripture there. So you see there that the Lord Jesus walked in obedience unto God. And we know that it was not easy for him because he was a human being. And Therefore, uh, how did he manage to live a life of obedience? How did he offer himself to the will of God and the purposes of God? Because it took the will of Jesus to submit to the will of God. So it's an act of um, it's an act of the will. Because it's not like God forced him or automatically uh, he was programmed to be obedient to the father. No, if he wanted, he could have been rebellious. But you see here that through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God. So the walk of obedience before the Lord. It's a lesson for us. We can also learn from it. We need the empowering of the Holy Spirit. Okay, yes, the power of sin is broken over our lives. But in addition to that, we have the Holy Spirit who helps us. So, you notice here, even Jesus, with the help of the Spirit, offered himself without spot to God. So just, uh, you know, uh, one more thought that I wanted to add there and we will move on to chapter 10 of Hebrews. So I hope you're all doing fine. Are you doing okay? Uh, is it? 
uh, you're able to understand Okay, Aran is saying yes, that's good. Uh, I hope so with the others as well. So please feel free if you have just an additional thought that you want to share to stop me anytime and uh, unmute and speak. Uh, but otherwise, I will continue. So we've understood about the work of Jesus. Now, again, you know, this is all in continuation. So uh, we are being told about the, the uh, Lord Jesus and his ministry verse 1 of hebrews 10 we see for the law having a shadow of the good things to come and i've explained this so many times over so by now you have understood it and not the very image of the things can never with these same sacrifices which they offer continually year by year make those who approach perfect okay we have understood that so the repeated sacrifices of the earthly, uh, uh, you know, kind will not help us uh, approach God. Okay, so it says, "For then would they not have ceased to be offered?" So if at all, at any point, uh, a perfect sacrifice was offered, then these practices would have just needed to be stopped. But you know that was not the case. For the worshippers, once purified, would have not, would have no more consciousness of sins. But in those sacrifices, there is a reminder of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could take away sins. Okay, now I told us earlier that the blood of animals did something for sins of people. And that was to cover Remember, we uh, considered that word, that Hebrew word kofer, which is simply to cover. But you see here in this verse, verse 4, it says, take away sins. Take away. That's different from covering. So, what is our understanding? Our understanding is that the blood of Jesus not just covers our sins, but it is able to take away our sins. Okay, that is the power of the blood of Jesus. And in continuation of what he's saying, he's continuing to talk about the sacrifice of Jesus. He says, uh, Jesus. As Jesus is speaking, this is an excerpt uh, from the book of uh, Psalms, Psalms 40, where Jesus says, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, you had no pleasure. Then I said, Behold, I have come. In the volume of the book, it is written of me to do your will, O God. So you see the relationship that the son has with the father. The father has his own will. The son has his own will. But the will of the son is submitted to the father. So the son is saying, God, I understand what is your desire. Your desire is not sacrifice and offerings, but the ultimate sacrifice through Jesus himself. And so what did God give Jesus? God became man. Jesus became man. And you notice here that the son is saying, but a body you have prepared for me. What is this body? Human, humanness, humanity. Humanity was given to the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord Jesus is now submitting his will to the Father. And he's saying to do your will, O God. God, I'm saying yes to what you want me to do. So, uh, that you know that kind of a relationship uh, is 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 uh, so special you know, within the godhead you have everyone who is co-equal everyone is god so why shouldn't there be a conflict among them but that's not what you see 
throughout scripture you see the unity and the harmony of the godhead even though they have a will of their own they all have a will of their own but there is unity there is love there is um, submission and jesus is submitting to the will of the father and uh, you know he's saying that it's through this body lord you know i'm ready to do what you want me to do and we know that he became a sacrifice that's exactly what he did and jesus affirms you know, again the writer uh, reiterates behold i have come to do your will o god is what jesus said to the father and through this what jesus has done is that the practices of the first covenant so he says he takes away the first that he may establish the second so the second one which is jesus is sacrifice is the main one that has been established that means the others have now been taken away so many people ask the question once you become a christian should you have these practices no we will study in the book of hebrews that now everyone is a priest unto god so we don't pick and choose you know somebody as okay in our congregation so and so will be high priest so and so will be priest and you will continue to offer sacrifices because our sacrifices have now become spiritual sacrifices what are these spiritual sacrifices we offer up our thanks our praise we give off our resources our money for the work of god these are all things that have that are our sacrifices to the lord right now um and so the first you know, all these earthly uh, practices of sacrificing have been taken away the second is now established but that we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of jesus christ once for all so you uh, notice here many things that have happened because of jesus sacrifice the remission of sins through the shedding of blood you know our, we have redemption from our transgressions and now what do we study we study that we have been sanctified meaning cleansed we are cleaned through the offering of the body of christ again once for all Okay. um now we will also look at this here it seems like sanctification is already done we have been perfected you know we'll come to that later but we there was no uh, offering a sacrifice that could perfect us you know words like perfect sanctified now does that mean that we no longer have to uh, that all of us at get go are perfect no don't go by the that understanding of the word perfected or perfect or here we have cleansed completely cleansed because we also see from other passages of scripture that we have to be continually sanctified okay so the cleansing is a continual process where we come to god we have to confess our sins we have to live our lives with um, repentance whenever we fall short of what god wants from us so sanctification is something that is done for us through the sacrifice of jesus when we are born again it's a spiritual reality okay however in our daily lives we have to live it out as well so there are two elements or two dimensions to this so uh, it doesn't mean that we are already perfect so if we interpret the perfect there as oh believer does not have to believer is every believer is perfect so then you have every right to look at other uh, writing to believers and wonder you know when uh, paul writes to the corinthian church they were also believers but he's telling them don't be carnal so can believers sin can believers be carnal answer is yes we could we could do um we could live a sinful life but we should not it's a choice we make okay it's our obedience to god to walk in righteousness so positional truth is one thing but living it out is also 
very very important so that is our understanding okay when we are reading uh, passages like this now let's move forward Again, same thing. We are being told that there was a repetition of these sacrifices um, and the uh, sacrifices which were offered, they could never take away the sins. But the Lord Jesus has offered one sacrifice for sins forever. Okay, So that sacrifice has already been made for us. And we are told that he sat down at the right hand of God. Remember, when we study the book of Acts, even there, we said Jesus uh, is, is somebody who sat down at the right hand of God to show that the work is completed. When one sits down, so the priests generally did not sit down because it was never over. Their work was never over. You know, it's so nice if... Uh, our tasks are done. We can tick it off. But in the case of the priest, every day they have to wake up. Every day they have to make sacrifices because it was never completed. But the only the Lord Jesus could say, okay, the work is finished. And the symbol of that or the uh, way this was shown was he sat down at the right hand of God uh, from that time, waiting till his enemies are made his footstool. So we know that certain things are still unfolding here on the earth. And we will see um, the, the fulfillment okay, of Christ's victory uh, completely in, in some time to come. So he's just you know waiting for the things here on earth to unfold. Uh, but here's what he has done. By one offering, he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. See, notice here, earlier we read, we are already sanctified. Now it's saying those who are being sanctified. So it is a process that we have to live out in the Christian life. But we notice a term like perfected forever. Again, don't mistake that as a believer is always perfect. There is no, no sin that we ever commit. No, that's not the understanding. We have to live out our life with uh, uh, faith and this walk with fear and trembling. Okay, uh, And what, what kind of work has the Lord Jesus done for us? We notice in these words, it says, I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds, I will write them. So, this is a new covenant, isn't it? And the Lord Jesus is the mediator of this better covenant. How is this a better covenant? One of the reasons is that the law is now written on our hearts, meaning our conscience is also awakened to the righteousness and the righteous life that we ought to live. And we have the work of the Holy Spirit inside of us, which was not there earlier. Yes, to an extent, all every uh, human being's conscience speaks to them about uh, right and wrong. But, you know, in addition to what has happened to us in our spirit man, when we were born again, uh, we also now have the witness of the Holy Spirit. So, so much has happened within us as believers when we are born again. And that is only because of the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is what has um, the new covenant that Christ Jesus has made with us through his sacrifice and, you know, he adds there that their sins and their lawless deeds, I will remember no more. You know, the fulfillment of that has now happened. So, you know, whenever we talk about forgiveness um, as believers, I don't think the, the Jews, the godly Jews um, who were involved in these practices could ever experience what we are experiencing now. To think that my sins are surely forgiven and God does not remember them anymore. That sense in our, within ourselves, in our spirit, I don't think uh, before Jesus' sacrifice people had that sense. But today, you know, I've heard so many believers say, uh, even those who have lived in 
sort of known sins maybe some substance abuse and uh, living for years with drinking and the wrong uh, uh, immoral lifestyle so when they come to christ and uh, they ac accept the sacrifice of the lord jesus you know many would testify in their in themselves in their spirit in their conscience they sense that they have even been forgiven of such sins that they no longer you know have that feeling of guilt that oh i have to pay my price i have to you no know, make it up to god no instead there is a freedom that i know that god is now my father he loves me he has given my sins uh and he doesn't remember my sins anymore you know sometimes we are the ones we remember our sins but what does god say if you fully accept it the work of jesus on the cross you know what i remember your sins no more so that must give us great confidence in the presence of god yeah so again we are told that where there is remission of these there is no longer an offering for sin so uh, for a for a born again believer you know you don't need to go back and keep trying to make it up to god so then what comes out of this we will slowly see that so in verse 19 now i told you we can be confident so what comes out of the work of jesus boldness in the presence of god the high priest once a year how did what was their um state of mind their emotions when they entered the presence of god i should not die fear they were scared for their lives and so in the presence of god i don't know you know whether they they were they were fully free to fellowship with god uh with a sense that god accepts me no i don't think so they could be that free even if they loved god they still had that fear of sin and the whether it was fully covered and all of that but after we have understood the work of jesus this is what the jewish believers are being told and this is a reality for us you know sometimes i think we don't uh, try to think deeply into this because we've got it we have already enjoyed it uh, and you know we don't take the time to understand how did we get this kind of boldness in the presence of god but for the jewish believers they needed to be told that you have struggled so hard to get something through jesus you've got something better so be strong you know don't let the persecution around you stop you from following him so now you know they are being told because of what jesus has done not even the high priest had the courage but what do you have boldness boldness to enter the holiest how we know through the blood of jesus remember we saw the blood it takes away the sins remission of sins so many things we saw wow the blood of jesus has done this for us we can enter the presence of god boldly so how many of us believers think you know sunday after sunday uh when i became a believer i remember i used to enjoy times of worship i could just feel like before i never had that experience but once i was born again and people were singing and you know that first few uh, uh you know maybe a half an hour 45 minutes of just worshiping the presence of god i used to enjoy sometimes i used to even weep because that sense of closeness with god i never experienced it before and i didn't feel scared but instead i felt wow you know i can be with god and uh there is fullness of joy isn't it in god's presence so enjoying all that boldly at that time i didn't understand how i could be bold in god's presence but now i can understand if jesus had not died if it was not for the blood of jesus i don't think i could have enjoyed it then and continue to enjoy it now so we got boldness to enter the presence of god only through what the lord jesus has done and 
in addition to that we are told by a new and living way obviously he made that way isn't it a new and living way he consecrated for us jesus made for us through the veil that is his flesh so through his body he gave us in other words access into the presence of god that every believer you can enjoy bold access into the presence of god at all times so now there are some teachings where people say that uh, you need somebody more mature than you or let's say a leader over us or a pastor over us to enter god's presence they will help us enter god's presence there is some truth to it because yes they are well versed in god's word and they can reveal that to us but as believers we are all even the the youngest believer has access direct access let me put it that way direct access into the presence of god because the body of jesus his flesh has been offered up for us and so any moment i can say okay god i want to talk to you i want to come into your presence and because of what jesus has done we have already received that access and in heaven right now uh, we have a high priest over the house of god so we know that the born again believers are uh, known as the house of god you know the church of god we've studied that you know different terms with which we uh, address the body of believers there is a high priest for us in heaven now what is the ministry which the lord jesus performs uh, up in heaven what is what is he doing for us everyone what ministry is jesus doing for us right now He intercedes for us, praying okay. and interceding for us. Yes, yes. Thank you, thank you, Thomas. So he is interceding for us. And one more thing which we have to understand, you know, we studied that um, uh, in the book of uh, Epistle of John, one John, we saw how uh, he is our advocate. So does that mean that he still has to argue on behalf of us to defend us for every sin? that may take place not really he has already done that work through his sacrifice so while we consider the lord jesus up in heaven we should not imagine him yes he is praying for us that is there uh but you know sometimes people think that for every sin like we have to go to jesus and then you know he will act as our advocate and he will pray to the father he will argue on behalf of us not really what he needed to do for the remission of our sins he has already done it okay so by virtue of his work there is an intercession that has already been done and we have been forgiven that's what uh the presence of jesus up in heaven it talks about but also um you know we we understand that that he is doing a, a work of uh intercession for us but not like the way we imagine okay so i'll just come back to the chats here and also i want to know if uh, you all can see me because i've had a power cut so but i think yeah my alternate network is connected can you hear me everyone Yes, ma'am. We can hear. Oh, okay, okay, great. I'm, I'm still connected. Okay, so, uh, when you think of intercession, don't think of it like a court case up in heaven. Okay, all right. So the chat over here, Aran says today some people sprinkle the blood of animals. Yeah, correct. They do sprinkle the blood of animals, but we don't have to do that. We've already clearly seen it. 
Jesus has already done it 2000 years ago and uh, Kiran has uh, commented and said that it happened to me also ma'am so maybe that sense of forgiveness no Kiran uh, where we experience such freedom in our spirit because of what Jesus has already done for us so good we have <laughs> excuse me clarified a couple of things so we've understood the kind of high priestly ministry also that Jesus has over the house of God. Now, verse 22, we are told, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith. How is it possible? Only because of Christ's sacrifice. Excuse me. Yeah. So we can uh, access God and come into his presence. And we are told, our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. So this is a spiritual thing because our hearts cleanse from an evil conscience. How is it possible? Because of, you could say, the shed blood of Jesus. We've already seen how it rescues us from dead works. But bodies washed with pure water refers to baptism. Now, in the Jewish rituals, there were many, many practices. <laughs> Excuse me, everyone. Yeah, there were many practices that had to do with uh, uh, washing, okay, washing hands, washing feet. So, there were lots of washings. So, when you said bodies washed the believer the jewish believer could think could ask the question which washing are you talking about but obviously we know that there is one body washing which is applicable to the born again believer and that is baptism so uh, we are being told here that you know we receive a clear conscience through the work of the blood of Jesus as well as the act of baptism. So a believer can now have one is access. You can enter easily. Second is confidence, right? Boldness, we said earlier. And now we are saying true heart and full assurance of faith that God is not going to reject us, but we have been accepted by God unconditionally in that sense. And we are told, let us hold fast the confession of our hope. Remember, we said that hope is our anchor. What do we have hope in? We have hope in the fact that our sins are forgiven. You know, we, we are going to have an eternal inheritance. We have the hope of resurrection in Christ Jesus. You know, these are all spiritual things. There's sometimes... Uh, we we may not be able to for an unbeliever we not be we may not be able to explain to them this is how I believe but deep within us we have that anchor which is called as hope that we already know we are expecting that God is uh, God has already done these things but He is also going to do many things in our life and so the believers are being encouraged. We, you see, Jesus has done so much. So please hold on to the confession. What confession? Our confession is a confession of faith. That you know, this is what Christ has done. This is what we are going to experience. Uh, the, the promises of God. So keep confessing those uh, with hope, without wavering. Don't be worried. So going back to the example of Abraham, because God who promised is faithful. So God is a God who will never tell us something that he is not going to do for us. Certainly he will do it. And this is leading us into an encouragement of believers where uh, we will be told about the way those who have gone ahead of us have believed God. So, believer, you may be going through so many challenges. The promise may not have been fulfilled. But you see, there are people who have, <coughs> excuse me, held on 
to the promise of god and uh, they have seen its fulfillment so you take courage from their life example and you hold on because one thing is god is faithful another thing is that there are people who have lived you know without uh leaving their confession of hope and so he is just encouraging the believers once again and he's saying that uh, we need to think of one another and he says you know stir up love and good works so the body of believers or the community of believers we say right like oh how should the church be we've talked about that in the house of god it's a house of prayer um it's it's a house of the presence of god uh we've also said that it is a family of god where we care for each other so as the believers were going through the difficulties in their times they are told to encourage each other today we have our set of challenges isn't it it may be different from what the jewish believers faced but this command stays for us stir up love and good works meaning be encouraging to one another uh live with love and uh, we must we must move one another towards doing the works of god so what are good works these are the works of god whatever uh, god wants us to do and we are also being encouraged not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together sometimes the tendency is to become a loner or become a uh, a person who avoids community you know because we are so discouraged you know discouragement can do that to us that we don't want to go to church we don't want to be part of a fellowship um you know so we are being encouraged you know when there are challenging times it is important for believers to encourage one another to show love towards one another and if possible also come together in a gathering so assembling of ourselves together as in this manner but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching so he's saying that they were all eagerly waiting for the second coming of christ and he's saying that fellowship is important good loving community of believers is very very important particularly in difficult times so please keep that up don't uh, give up and then he says for if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins but a certain fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation which will devour the adversaries so once again you know as he spoke about uh one falling away there is a warning there's an explanation of the sacrifice of jesus then there is an encouragement to keep continuing strong in the faith and now there is a warning same like hebrew 6 where we are told just because you know this is what we say grace 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 that doesn't give us a license to sin because if we sin after having understood everything we are making that sacrifice of jesus uh like we are not considering it with reverence and so it no longer is applicable for us so he's saying no longer remains a sacrifice for sins it will not be valid for a person who is willfully notice there sin willfully and what can that person expect they can expect judgment they can expect uh you know the result of sin which is god's anger so indignation god's anger so don't be uh such a person instead be a person who is walking in the ways of god so what i'll do is we'll just stop here because we are running out of time we'll quickly come back we can wrap up this and we're going into a very beautiful passage next which is hebrews 11 it is known as the uh, 
uh, hall of faith okay and we will see how so many men and women of god lived a life of faith without wavering uh, and you know that's an example for us to live our lives by as well so let's close with a word of prayer uh, any one of us can you please pray so that we can wrap up today's class prince prince can you pray yeah yeah go ahead thank you lord thank you in this morning lord you uh, help us to learn that uh, from the book of hebrew that you are the one the mediator for uh, you are in the uh, is the high priest for us lord thank you we don't have to be, uh, worry about uh, about the old testament but you are the new that we could enter in the presence of lord thank you thank you for your mercy and grace for us each of us lord thank you you have blessed us in this subject uh you help us to uh, learn and more and more lord thank you upcoming time i submit in your hand in jesus name i pray amen 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 thank you thank you prince god bless you and uh, all of you have a wonderful day we will meet again next monday and hopefully let's see how much we can finish okay all right bye bye for now thank you thank you, thank you. bye